You dyslexic bastard. Yes, you! Do you need an audiobook because you can't read? Mm -hmm. Check out the links in the description to find Aaron Clary's books on audible.com and throw this shit away. Good Pops here today. I'm going to answer a couple of requests. All right, dudes. If you're on that conveyor belt of divorce, it's not filed yet, but you know you're going over the cliff. Listen and listen well. You remember those Bugs Bunny cartoons from way back when? I know I'm dating myself, but it's like putting your finger in the barrel of that gun. It's still going to blow up but it'll get her too, not just you. Because let's face it, divorce doesn't have to be like a Claymore mine where it's only dangerous on one side. <laughs> With that being said, gentlemen, put on your flak jackets, you bunch of cunts. Let us begin. Yeah. Before we get into this, I'm gonna go over the basics. And I know I've harped on it again and again and again, but gentlemen, you need to know what you're up against. First marriages, 50% chance of failure or success. There's a positive side there. <laughs> Sounds like good odds, but it ain't. Because guess what? If you stay on the floor long enough, the house always wins. If you've done this a second time, you've probably fallen for these simple words. I'm different. What that really means is be my victim. You now have a 60 to 65% chance of failure. I brought this up after my buddy's wedding when I high five him and I said, welcome to your 38% chance of success. People who heard me do the high five in the church were pretty mad. And then they're also mad at the speech afterwards too because I brought it up a second time. But I know it's a dick move, but you know, fuck marriage is dead anyway. Moral of the story, my best man days are done. I'm way beyond that now. You got me when I was young and stupid, but now I know the deal. And what's the deal? <laughs> I don't know. The dude gets married again for the third time and has a 70% chance of failure. Yes. Second in two years. Third overall. <laughs> Ross, I have been a divorce attorney for 23 years and never have I had so much business from one client. I know you're like, Pop, the third time's a charm. <laughs> yes, it is for losing 75% of your shit after three divorces. Hey, listen, if your goal is to, you know, be homeless and live in a refrigerator box, third time's a charm. In fact, aren't most homeless men? If you're a dude out there and you've been married three times or more, you're a special kind of stupid. In fact, you're yellow cake uranium stupid. Why don't you just turn it off now and go watch bronies? Ross, it's not that big a deal. So you'll have been divorced three times. You'll still have a life. You'll go on dates. No, no, no I won't. I'll be at the bottom of the dating barrel now. Uh, the only guys below me will be four divorce guy, a uh, murderer guy, and, and geologists. It doesn't really matter how many times you've been married. You need to learn this lesson so you can beat the bitch in divorce. Honey. <gasps> no! <laughs> and now you have to really be familiar with rule number one. It's rule number one, not for you, but for her. And you need to know this, we call it the silver bullet or the nuclear option. She'll either allude to it or flat out point the finger at you and claim abuse. And why do they do this? Because it makes everything so much easier and her attorney probably told her to do it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, you tooling up her face or abusing her. It could be anything. It can even be emotional abuse, which by the way is a crime in England now. Hey, feminism is for men too. Fuck off. Another thing you need to realize, gentlemen, is the divorce courts are biased against you as a man. And they're like that in Canada, England, and pretty much the entire Western world. As a dude in the Western world, when you walk in a divorce court, you must be wearing the suit of the gimp. And you better take position, because you're gonna get it in the ass. I'll just, I'll just take one thrust. Oh, oh. All the lawyers, counsel, barristers, they all know it's true, it's totally corrupt. My lawyer even knew I was gonna get fucked, because I said, hey, I'm gonna get fucked. And he said, yes, you are, but it's my job to figure out how many strokes they take on you. Really? Three, oh my God! And woe to you if you have children and you walk into divorce court, because guess what? Friend of the cunt is not your friend. That's exactly what's gonna happen. There's the judge, there's your soon-to-be ex-wife, there's friend of the court. You talk, they hold up their hand and say, best interest of the child. So they trump all of your rights for the best interest of the child. And it doesn't really matter. Your ex-wife could be high on smack, be arrested for prostitution, and she'll get custody of those kids 85% of the time. That 15% where you get custody of those kids, half of that is uncontested. So when you back that out, it's 93-7. Now listen, these are some long odds. And that just adds to the number and the length of strokes they take on you. 93, 94, 94 is my attorney. Let's be realistic here, gentlemen. Say you're part of that lucky 7% that gets custody of your kids. And by the grace of God, they award you child support. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Ah, good luck seeing it. When you look at the stats, there's way more deadbeat mothers out there than deadbeat fathers. But you never hear about that because the courts don't give a shit. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't some deadbeat fathers out there. There is. There's guys out there slinging seed like an old bird feeder and they just go away. There's a certain demographic out there that has over 70% single mothers. I know we use a couple expressions here like, uh, three times the charm? <laughs> well, it takes two to tango. Every darkness we bag on everybody. So guess who I'm gonna bag on next? The true deadbeat dads out there who throw a load and leave by, listen, your dicks and you need to be punished to a certain extent of law. If you know you got a kid out there and you're running from it, it ain't gonna do you any good, and it's not gonna do the kid any good. Why are you riding me? It's what I do. Has it got worse lately? Yeah, seems to me. Really? Well, that rules out the race thing. She was just as black last week. All right, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. You already know what to expect when you go into a divorce, and I'm gonna show you here how to beat it. You're gonna beat that shit like it owes you money, because guess what? It does. For this to be truly effective, you're gonna need time. You gotta see it coming or feel it coming so you can act appropriately. You have to use this list before any paperwork is filed because once it is, it's a lock and you're screwed. I know you're gonna be like, well, Pop, most guys are caught by surprise. And that would be true unless they know how to purchase a key logger. I don't care if you put a GPS on the car or bug the house or bug her car or buy a nanny cam, it doesn't matter. You just have to do what you need to do so you get some leeway and you know what's coming. Because guess what? If you get caught with your pants down, it's easier for the judge to fuck you. And no, uh, there's no such thing as a reach around in there, man. 103, one, when is this gonna end? 21 years from now. The bitch stole my boat, damn it. The first thing you gotta do is join AA, Gamblers Anonymous, or NA, or hell, join all three because it's really not gonna affect your chance of getting the kids anyway. Once you do this, you gotta start draining those accounts. And you gotta be careful of the laws in your state so you don't attract a lot of attention by taking out 50 grand at a time. That's why you need time to do this. I'm not talking about big chunks. I'm talking like, I don't know, 10,000, 9,000, like you're going on vacation, but you're going to the casino and you're blowing it. Really. Every time you take a big chunk of cash, go right to the goddamn casino. This is where it gets dicey. You need to use your phone there, use your credit card, buy dinner so they can verify that you are actually at the casino at that time. This isn't like an FBI sting or anything. This is divorce court. They don't give a shit about what you're doing. They just want to verify you were there. And the very next day, you take that cash, give it to your buddy who has a safe, or you convert it into gold or silver and bury the shit or hide it somewhere. Don't get a safety deposit box because that's connected to your social security number. Okay, and this is a rinse repeat thing. You keep doing it over and over again until either it's detected or the paperwork is filed or you run out of money. Because once the paperwork is filed, those accounts are frozen, it's a lock, and you have to ride it in all the way to the scene of the crash. I talked to a lot of dudes from uh, Redonculus and secondclasscitizen.org, and there was one guy who did this for 15 months before he got detected. He walked away with 180 grand. Hats off to you, you are a genius. <laughs> I wish I knew that when I was getting divorced. And once that paperwork is filed, <laughs> winning, they're gonna drag you into court and go, where's all the money? Yeah, I don't have it, sorry. Oh, well, all right then. Mmm, that's good OJ. Ah! And this is when you pull out the three cards for sh three shell Monty. <laughs> the NA card, the AA card, and the Gambler's Anonymous card. You put a big frowny face on and go, I have a problem. Boom! All right, Mr. Prop, uh, it seems that we have an issue with your finances here. Uh, where's the money? Oh, you know, I knew this divorce was coming and I was very stressed, so uh, I went to the casino. I have a problem with gambling. I have a problem with drinking. And I take hydrocodone sawyers on my cards. Sorry. Sorry to hear about that. Go on, Space Ghost. Okay. You're going to pull that curtain back and show them the whole full Monty. And don't be mistaken, they are going to punish you for this. Ah! Where's my money? <laughs> you going to give me my money? Where's my money, man? <laughs> Just when you think the show is over, the judge is probably going to stick you with all of the debt and the legal bills for your soon-to-be ex-wife. But listen. <laughs> You still have a trick up your sleeve, and that one is Chapter 7 Bankruptcy. Winning! You get all that debt put on you, and then you file for bankruptcy, and if she's co-signed for it, it goes right back to her. Winning! I'm just gonna say, it's a pretty hard to get another dude to jump in your lap when you're covered in debt. Because debt stinks like a toxic wave of dinosaur shit. When you stink like that, dudes are gonna steer clear of you, because guess what? You're expensive. Because ladies, debt and desperation, they're both sides of the teeter-totter, and men don't like to play that game. 
So guess what? Max your credit cards, get some cats, and suck it. Eat the cat food. In what right. scenario do you not eat the cat food? I would always eat the cat yeah, food. I know. I know it's a bankruptcy, but it really, it only puts you in hot water for about 36 months, which is how long it takes to fix your credit if you know what you're doing. And guess what? Over time, you can filter in all that money that you stashed away, and you'll be golden. Where's the money? Ah! Ah! Yeah, you like that? That feels good? That feels good? And a lot of you are out there going, dog, it's dishonorable, and I always pay my debts. Oh, yeah, why don't you tell that to GM? You are under the gun to lose half your shit on the first divorce. Your children stuck with all the debt Pay for houses you don't get to live in and probably lose your car and be homeless. Do you really think that this is worse than having her do that to you? It's not. You square off against the enemy who wants to absolutely destroy you. Honor has nothing to do with it. It's strictly survival. And yes, I say utterly destroyed because they take half your money and then the other half of your money you have to pay her attorney. You lose your house, you lose your kids. Hell, my wife even killed my own goddamn dog. There you go. <laughs> Ah! Where's the money, man? Where's my money? You got till five o'clock, you hear me? You got till five o'clock. You freaking psychopath! Yeah, clean yourself up. Ex-wife is your enemy. Treat her as such. You loved her when you married her, and you'll love her when you divorce her because it means loathing a vicious enemy, and that's exactly what she is. And all you men out there who have actually gone through this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is a war, and it lasts anywhere from 18 to 21 years, depending upon the state you're living in. This isn't a war of attrition where you can afford to lose stuff here and there. No, 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 no. You need to cut it clean and win. If you don't win or at least break even, the effects are very dismal. Google divorced men, outcomes of divorced men, and suicide of divorced men, and you'll see the numbers for yourself. But feminism is for men too! <laughs> Fuck off! And gentlemen, with that being said, I will take a bow. Because I have successfully briefed you on how to commit swindle side. Ha! No knives, no guns, no Molotov cocktails, and most of all, no mercy. She was going to do it to you, bend you over, have her lawyer give you the screw, and you just turned it around on her. That's all you did. 248? 249? Are we done yet? God! I know you guys are out there, especially you divorce guys. You're like, Pop, you've left out so much shit. And you would be correct. But this is only method one of three. You know what you're going to do? You're going to take those three fingers and turn it into a shocker and hammer it. You got the teaser, the pleaser, the shocker, the spocker, the fister, and the divorce. Check out the links below, Patreon and PayPal, and I promise I'll keep all my fingers to myself. And while you're at it, gentlemen, hit the subscribe button. Because if you do, I'll draw you one hell of a treasure map to find your shit. <laughs>turn it off now and go watch bronies. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that shit. I remember I saw that on TV. I was just like, bronies. I was like, is this a serious thing? Is this real? And then they had the furries. They like, wear those suits. I'm like, what is going on? This is insane. You need to shoot them all. Everyone gets shot.